Okay, in our last video, we we have we're, we're logged into MySQL, and we just created a simple table, and we entered a few rows. Um, I want to save this because we're going to use this uh, another example or in a moment. Uh, example SQL. So MySQL is just one of many databases you can use. It's it's one of the big ones. Another big one is Oracle. It's actually made by the same company. Um, let's see here. Oracle database. So we're going to what am I doing? Oracle XE download. We're going to download um, another small little one. This one, so this is Oracle's free one uh, of of their of the bigger brother, in a sense. So let's see here. Du, 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 du. We'll just looks like they don't have a 64-bit one for Windows. That's okay. Uh, we'll just use the 32-bit one. It should work okay. Now for this one, you're going to need to sign up for a free account. So I'm going to put in my credentials and hit sign in. And I just did that. I took my username and password out. But uh, as soon as I hit sign in, it was correct. It began downloading here. So let's just um, wait a minute. And we'll wait for this to finish downloading. So this is Oracle 11G, um, 300 megabytes. If you want to go with the Oracle t XE10, it's about it's a little less, and it's like 150. And for what we're doing for this, it's fine. But anyway, just go ahead and get uh, Oracle 11. I show it in the folder, and I'm going to go ahead and we're going to extract it. So as soon as you're done, we'll just go ahead and we'll let it set up, and we'll walk through the installation for Oracle XE, meaning Express Edition. Now. Oracle has other versions like Enterprise and stuff. Uh, the the the, the full-fledged version of Oracle it's very expensive. Like it's meant for big corporations and whatnot. So we're just going to yeah we'll let it install to Oracle XE and C that works okay. So this is a pass password for the system admin. Um, I'm just going to do something really unsecure. I'm just going to say password. Uh, you'd never do this in a real environment for you know for just learning stuff. Uh, weak passwords are okay, but yeah, that password for the so the their super user uh, the super user in MySQL was called root, and uh, for Oracle uh, it was sys. So that's anyway, we'll come back to that. The point is that the super user, the all powerful one. It's named something a little bit different in different databases. So we'll just let, let this go ahead and install. Okay, finally finished installing. So what just happened? What is going on? So the few so just so that installation just did a few different things. Let's go ahead and exit out of this for now. One of the first things it did now Oracle, they, I'll come to this later. They have a little uh, way to interact with the database you just installed. But one of the things they did, if we go to properties, advanced, and look at the system path again. And down here to the very end. Oh. Copy that. Let's bring out notepad. Oops. They went ahead and they added um, in the path. Looks like they put it at the beginning here. We'll ignore all this other stuff. They added the bin directory or the binary where all the executable code is to the system path. So now when we go in, to, let's go ahead and look at that directory to see all the new commands that we can now access in command prompt. You see they have all these different commands. And uh, we'll get to those in a minute. So that's the first thing it did. 
The second thing it did, if we go to services, it installed some services on the system, which once again are just programs that just start up and are always running. Um, let's go down to O's. I'm going to refresh this just to make sure everything's. And I believe they put it, where do they put it? There we go. So Oracle, now my SQL, it just started a bunch of them. But uh, you can see that Oracle, it uh, it installed quite a few services. I uh, think we'll say about five of them. Um, only two of them start, though. There's a listener and uh, this other service here. I believe that's the website thing. Yeah, we're not going to look at that right now. The point is that it installed some services. Okay, let's go back to doing some contrast in here. So in MySQL, the the command to command to log on command line was MySQL. In Oracle, the command is SQL plus, which and all that's really referring to is the name of the executable file in here. Let's see here, this has a lot. There it is, SQL plus. They just decided to call it that for whatever reason. Um, so the way you get in after you do select SQL plus as sysdba, and anyway, there's a lot about logins, but we won't get into the intricacies about the differences. But in all practical purposes, let's go ahead and uh, ys, uh, boom, boom, boom. let's get another command prompt here so you can kind of see the difference. I'm going to do MySQL user root and uh, password. So in both cases, we're now logged onto the databases. You can see how databases are very similar, at least these two are. And on this one, just in the same way that we were able to create a table in the um, uh, in the MySQL, we can also do it here. So on this one, uh, I'll just see if this works for us here. Create table. Table created. Now, few things here. We are logged on as sysdba, and we're actually in uh, a table space that you won't ever really do this on in production. Once again, for instructional purposes, just kind of showing you how this works. Um, so you can see that SQL. Um, the idea is you have a structured query language that works in multiple languages. And uh, this is how it works in both Oracle and SQL. So on this one we can do select star from person. And it displays the table a little bit differently. This one we got use example select star from person. And there you go. So that is running Oracle and a MySQL database.